Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I've hung out. I'm looking forward to just chatting, catching up, showing you some new makeup, putting together this look, so let's get started. Okay, so let me tell you what inspired this whole purchase. I was just innocently scrolling through Instagram one day and then I saw a reel by Hindash where he was doing this roses on ice makeup look. In it, he used his color fluid in the shade Carve and his manifesto lipstick in the shade Rest in Roses. And of course, the model he was working on was just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. And the resulting look with this lipstick in particular, I thought, by getting these products, of course I'm going to look like that. Again, it's the whole fantasy coming into play. I'd already had an interest in getting this because I did want a cool toned sort of base that I could use and specifically a liquid eyeshadow. So here we are. So right off the bat, let me show you the differences between the Hindash and the two Violet FR shades I have here. Okay, so here we have Hindash in Carl. Violet FR in Petite Culotte and Violet FR in To Do. So you can see all three of them are quite different and on my hand they appear to be quite similar texturally but I experience a massive difference between them in application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply Carve on one eye and Petite Culotte on the other because I think both function well as a base for other eyeshadows. So I'll zoom you in slightly so you can get a better idea of the texture. Okay, so on this eye, let's put the Violet Tefal and Petite Coulotte. This is much, much thicker than the Hindash Color Fluid. It also feels slightly stickier, so it has more tack when you apply it. I would say the Hindash feels a lot more cosmetically elegant to touch but I find the Violet FR lasts longer. Now we'll go in with Carve and I just scraped any excess product off both applicators when I'm doing this. This feels much easier to apply so if you're not really comfortable with liquid eyeshadows then the Hindash one is your go-to. Okay so here is the Hindash in Carve and Violet FR in Petite Coulotte. The Violet FR is much more pigmented, so you really need the slightest amount, especially with colors like To Do, which are, you know, are a lot more intense. The Petite Coulotte is a bit more forgiving because it, you know, especially with my skin tone, it just blends in. But with the Hindash, you don't need to be as careful, I find. It's very forgiving, whereas with the Violet FR, you really need to tread carefully or it can be a big mess. Whereas the Viola de Far side has a more powdery finish, this has a more, I don't want to say satin because it has dried down, but it just has that slightest bit of viscosity to it. So I hadn't done this before with Petite Culotte on one side and Carve on the other. And despite looking so different swatched, they are looking remarkably similar on my eyes right now. That is interesting. So if I had to recommend one, I would recommend the Violet FR because I do find it much longer lasting and it also behaves better as a base for eyeshadows, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to apply more on top. If I had to compare the texture on how they feel on the eyes now, they feel pretty much the same. I would say the Hindash just feels slightly thinner and that does come across throughout the day because I do experience a little bit of creasing by the end of the day. Only when I wear this eyeshadow on its own. The Viola de Far, I will experience creasing after maybe 12, 13, 14 hours, okay? But for the majority of the day, say after eight hours of wear, it is still there, it isn't budging, and it is, despite creasing, it is still quite difficult to remove. So you need a strong eye makeup remover to to remove it successfully. But yeah, that is an interesting discovery I am making just now that they look the same. I am not too sure how I feel about that, but here we are. Now I'm curious, let me show you on my hands. So I'm going to apply Petite Coulotte. They look wildly different there, but then let me take just a little bit. Okay, so now I, again, they look different there, but they look so similar on the eyes. 
It's only when I go really close that I can see the difference. Particulate obviously has more pink undertones to it, but I mean, it's so minor. So if you're looking for a strong eyeshadow paste, I would go with the Violet FR Petit Culotte over the Hindash. Just know that it is a thicker formula. You do not have a lot of time to play with it. It sets very, very quickly, faster than the Hindash. And it doesn't feel as cosmetically elegant, but that's not to say it isn't a cosmetically elegant product. It is. I adore Violet FR's U paints, but if I had to be nitpicky, I would say the Hindash is just a lot silkier in feeling. So another news, Surat sent me some things and you should have seen my face when I saw that that emailed me. I was like, you know who I am? I'm a nobody on YouTube. I was just so shocked and so flattered. Now I'm a big fan of Surat. I have talked about quite a few of their products here already on YouTube. Uh, one of my first videos on YouTube was a full face of Surat Beauty. So yeah, I was very excited to receive something from them and they sent me some eyeshadows and I didn't have these shades already so I was very excited. They did send me some blushes but I already had them. Of course, I already have so many of their artistic blushes, right? <laughs> so it was unsurprising. Now I'm just showing you the texture of these eyeshadows. They are so soft and silky and easy to blend and ah. Oh. So here we have a side line which I think is so gorgeous. Next to it is my pesh, ingenue, and suede. Very beautiful. I'm especially loving this shade lately, sideline, which is this one right here. It's gorgeous. So this is yeah. So this is the one I'm reaching for a lot, sideline. Beautiful. I'm gonna play with them today and put them on top of these eye paints that I've got on. So I want to use in particular these two shades, Sway and Ingenue. So I'm just gonna get some on my brush. I'm gonna do a light dusting of it. Really pretty. And let's do the other eye. Okay, first I'm going to be applying the Rose's lipstick. I'm going to go in with Ingenue. So this very beautiful pink. And I'll show you, these are very, very light. I love them. They are so easy to work with. Oof. Okay, so I'm going to use my finger here. And let's use the shade Zybline here as well. And let's put that on the outer corner. Okay, good. So again, these shadows are so soft, very, very easy to work with, very forgiving, but not at all highly pigmented, which I do enjoy because you know, you get a bit of freedom to play around and they blend with each other so smoothly. Okay, so let's check in with how these swatches have dried on my hand. Again, this is the Viola de Bar, the Hindash, and this is me taking some and putting it there. So this is how they dry. And again, if I go over like this, it doesn't go anywhere. So the thing with the Hindash color fluids is that they're not only intended for use on the eye, but you can use them for your complexion as well. And he has other shades where you can mix and match and create blush shades. It's really quite clever and very utilitarian. But I wanted to compare his shade with Westman Atelier's Contour Stick in Biscuit. Okay, so here we have Hindash in Carve and Westman Atelier Biscuit. These are the two compared. So in his tutorial, Hindash uses his lip liner in the shade Hush. I'm gonna go in with Sicily in Beige Natural because these lip liners are my absolute favorite. Nothing can replace them. I'm just gonna go on the outside. Normally I like to color the whole lip in, but to give you a better idea of the lipstick, I'm just gonna do an outline. Okay, so let's talk about this color fluid. So let me swatch it. So this is just one gentle swipe. Let me do more. There it is, more intense. Now I haven't tried Violetta Fa's Bisu Balm, but I imagine that it's quite similar. The idea that it's a more matte formula that you can build up. 
It's a really beautiful color. I'm going to apply it bit by bit so you can see it applied, how it changes. So that's one coat. Let's do another. And here it is with another layer. And let's go again. God, that construction noise sounds like the world's biggest fly. Okay, so here it is built up even more. So here are the swatches on my hand compared to my lip application. I really do like this formula a lot. I like how it's very buildable. It doesn't feel drying at all, but I do always make sure my lips are well moisturized before I apply any makeup. This wears decently well without the day. I wouldn't call it a long wearing lip product, but it does behave well. I don't find it bleeds or anything. And I like layering it with other lip products as well. It's very thin. It's a very thin formula. So I would be curious to compare it with Violette de Far's Bisou Balm because I have a suspicion that they're quite similar. But just like the eye products, I suspect that Violette de Far's uh, lip product is more drying. Now in terms of comparisons, what I have is the Hermes lipstick, the matte metal lipstick in 81 Rouge Grenade. So just from the swatches, you can see the difference between the two. I adore the Hermes formula and I do prefer it. But the Hindash is nice if you want something that's thin and buildable. Now that you have an idea of what this looks like, I am going to apply this up top because I just think for this look, this is more the color that I was wanting anyway. Mm, I love that. Okay. So at the end of the day, I'm not unhappy with these purchases, but they weren't necessary. And I did let the fantasy take over thinking, oh, to look like her. I have the picture in front of me, to look like her and to have that face. I need those products and that's something I just need to stop doing. And I did love the idea of a buildable formula, but at the end of the day, I love a good pop of color on the lips and I adore the Hermes formula and the color is really quite similar. So yeah, I didn't need the lipstick, but I am happy to have it and I do use it. I keep it in my work bag just because it's nice to just add a little something. It's a very nondescript sort of color. So I just, if I feel like I might need something, I don't have to think about my application. I don't need a mirror for it. So it is handy. So another product that Surratt sent that I hadn't tried before are the Torche Lumiere highlighting sticks. So they sent them in the colors Rose Diamante. And I mean, oh, it is so beautiful. I am going to compare it for you against Westman Atelier Pour de Rose. Okay, so here is the Seurat. This is the Westman Atelier. They are very similar, but the Seurat does offer that more icy sheen, which I think is just so pretty. And the other one they sent is in the color Door. So gold, so I've got those two side by side and the Westman Atelier. I think they're just stunning and they blend really, really well. I've been reaching for Rose Diamante especially a lot since I first got it. And they sent the package at least a good few weeks ago now. But yeah, I was very excited to receive the package. Again, I was so shocked that they even know who I am. I'm surprised anyone knows who I am. So I am going to apply Rose Diamante today, but first I want to try applying Rest in Roses as a blush. I haven't tried that yet, so this is gonna be a first, but Hindash does it in his tutorial, so I'm gonna try and do the same. So what he does is he puts some on his hand like this, and then just uses a brush, puts it on, so let's try. Ooh. That is nice. Oh, that, that is nice. Why didn't I try that before? Okay, now I love this product even more. That is an outstanding blush. Wow. Okay, all right. Okay, so there it is as a blush. Now for the highlight, I'm going to use my finger. Okay, so there's the highlight. I just think it is so stunning. I love this color. 
yeah, those are the new products and swatches that I wanted to share with you. So how are people doing right now as I'm filming this? It is during the Sephora sale. And let me tell you, I didn't buy any makeup during the sale. But I did order the Byredo Remembrance Palette. Ooh, I know. Breaking my rule because I thought the Hindash would be good for the month, you know? I thought, okay, I'm good. I'm getting nothing from the Sephora sale. And then the Byredo just had me in the chokehold. I watched a couple of videos featuring it. And initially I wasn't tempted because I'm not drawn to larger palettes, as you know. And then I watched Cherie Voyage. And she pointed out that... The color story is organized in a way that they're all sort of just quads grouped together. And I thought, oh, it's, it seems obvious, right? But when she said that, I thought, oh, now it seems so much more tempting. And then I talked to a couple of you who have subscribed to me and one of you purchased it and said it was so beautiful and really gorgeous. And I thought, well, you know, and you know how by radio eyeshadows comprise the majority of my eyeshadow collection but I don't have one of their larger palettes and I was so curious and have been in the mood for a lot of pinks lately and I saw swatches and I thought, oh, it just looks so versatile, so pretty. So I caved. It's been shipped and I'm so excited. <laughs> so what happened was that I watched Cherie Voyage's video on it and I had it in my selfish cart and I thought, no, you know, I'm gonna be strong. I'm gonna leave it in my cart. I'm gonna sleep on it. And by tomorrow, I'm sure I'll be over it. But instead, I woke up checking my cart, thinking I'd be so disappointed if it wasn't available anymore. And I thought, I took that as a sign. I thought, okay, you know, I, I can see myself getting a lot of use out of this. And I'm hoping I don't have too many shades that are similar already. So I promise when I get it, shortly after receiving it, I want to do a deep dive into how it compares to shades I already have and let you know my full thoughts on it, tell you if it was worth it. Because while I am happy with the Hindash products, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't get them, you know? So it's not to say I don't like them, it's just that I have things that are very similar already. But I've heard that the Byredo eyeshadow formula in the larger quad is so unique, so yeah, we'll see. We will see. But I'd love to know how you are all doing with your makeup collections and makeup spending and what's catching your eye and what isn't and what are you resisting or do you have the Byredo palette? I'd love to know. By the way, this mascara I got last month, love. Like I said, I'd used it before, but I'm really happy I got it. And yeah, I don't feel the need to go on this mad mascara hunt anymore all right so that is everything i had to show you i think by the way i cut my hair i did it myself what do you guys think i was considering filming the whole thing and i did even go to set it up in the bathroom but it was just a gong show and i thought well until i get more confident at doing it myself i think i should fully concentrate on what i'm doing but yeah what do you guys think i tried to give myself just some light layers and yeah, I'm happy that I didn't have to trot all the way over to the hairdresser and fork over 120 bucks. If you have any questions about any of the products I used today, just let me know. If you'd like more swatches or more details or anything, I'm trying to be thorough, but I really have no idea what I'm doing. So just shoot me a question. You can send me a message, whatever. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and cannot wait to chat with you. Hoping you're having a great day or evening and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.